So I was watching the amazing Spider-Man 2012 with Andrew Garfield, and they just added it to Netflix. And I was as I was watching it, this is the scene where he's fighting a lizard inside the classroom. And there's something. He lands on a very interesting book, and I'm going to draw a very weird connection here. So I want you to pay attention. I'm going to make this full screen, and I have the playback speed slowed down some. So I want you to pay close attention. Watch his head. Watch his head. The mark. The mark. Very clear as day. The mark. Right here in alignment where it says Stephen King's title, Desperation. Uh, let me see if he lifts his head so you can see that title. Maybe not, but I'm not going to play too much more of that. But that's the title of the book. Now, whom? He's fighting a lizard. Okay, well, let me go back here. Let me, let me back up some. So you can actually see the actual cover of the book. But this is the exact book right here. This was written back in the early 2000s. But here's the weird connection that I made. So he's in a classroom fighting a lizard who the human name for the lizard is Dr. Kirk Connors, who takes uh, an injection of lizard DNA in hopes that it gives him regenerative abilities to make his arm grow back, but it does even more than that. But it, it's an injection. It's, it's a, some sort of like hybridization injection that he takes. Spider-Man's fighting him, and by convenience, they place Spider-Man. Of all books in the world he could land on, he lands on the mark. So injection, the mark, Stephen King's Desperation. What <laughs> you really can't make these things up in terms of certain placements of items when you see in movies. And I don't know sometimes the logic behind it, but it has a lot to do with the messaging uh, for your subconscious from my understanding. But yeah, I just wanted to draw this out and make a weird connection. Let's also go down a, a little bit deeper down with an analytical expose about this. And you to yourself may be saying, that's a weird connection because you're like, oh, I thought the mark of the beast was going to be some microchip, just like it says in the Left Behind books. Well, we're not really taking into account our technology, our scientific medical breakthroughs. Um, what, what is it? CRISPR technology, gene splice. We're not taking that into consideration at all. Things that those technologies that were probably burgeoning back when this book was Written in microchips was all the rage, but let's take a look at where we're at now. What, what is going on here? What does scripture have to say about this? Many people often think that Revelation often provides this indecipherable mystery with no practical sense to our reality, but that couldn't be further from the truth. For example, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 6, in the King James Version, it reads, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now, what does this scripture have to do with the mark, per se? As we've seen in an amazing Spider-Man, Dr. Kirk Connors creates a formula that allows the DNA of a lizard to provide him regenerative abilities. The only problem is that this goes terribly wrong, and instead he ends up becoming a lizard, losing his humanity in the process. In scripture, it says that if we take the mark, we no longer have the opportunity to be redeemed by the blood of Christ. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11, subtitled, Doom for Worshippers of the Beast, reads, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his bark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, the Lamb being Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now, is that because the mark is more than just the microchip that these books have been talking about for years, but it's something that hybridizes us through the infusion of Lucifer's blood? If you read Genesis 6, this is the first foray into human hybridization as the sons of God saw the daughters of man that they were fair, took them as wives, and gave birth to giants, also known as the Nephilim. I believe this last generation will be the devil's final hooray into trying his old tricks one last time as I believe the mark will be more of a promise to people to help them transcend their own humanity where one will not become sick, can see 10 times better so I won't need my glasses anymore, run faster, jump higher, but more importantly, they won't see death. Now, many movies always illustrate where man accepts merging with something that would grant him some sort of superpowers beyond his ordinary abilities, and the mergeable always just ends terribly. 
Now I ask this question, what does Hollywood know that us as Christians just won't preach in churches today? Ultimately, that's why you shouldn't get the mark of the beast. It's a counterfeit to the incorruptible body Christ has promised us beyond our present physicality. And unfortunately, those who love the world and want to preserve their life will end up getting the mark. That is an unfortunate reality. Now, if you're taking heed to this video as a stark warning and very seriously, now I would suggest you go ahead and sign up to my email list where I am writing a book called The Mark, What It Is and What It Is and What It's About To Be down in the description box below. You'll also be privy to all my updates on my website for articles and other research findings that I'm actually doing for Is God or For Against Me. Thank you for watching and God bless you.